a mango tree can say that it is an orange, but that does not make it an orange tree. It is by doing things that we will change. And talking about the mind, it is Malcolm X who once said that if you've been made to come through the back door for too long, even where there is no back door, you'll create one. <laughs> <laughs> and I think many times we find ourselves in a situation where there is a front door. But we are not willing or ready to go through the front door. We want to create a back door for ourselves. The time has come that we must stop. The whole idea that Africa can only regain her lost glory through investment is one that has been recognized times without number. Many of you who are here in the diaspora will remember the very early efforts of Jamaica's Marcus Garvey. When he came up with his project, he recognized that the only way in which we are going to be recognized is to do things that change people's lives. Today, the Chinese are gaining recognition throughout the world, not just because of what they say, but because of what they do. This morning, as we entered this room, and as we registered our presence in this room, we were given little notebooks which are now resident on your tables. If you turn the back of your notebooks, you will note that they are made in Guangzhou in China. <laughs> <laughs> the Chinese don't have to announce their presence, they are here by dint of that little notebook. And that is what I hear saying today. That Africa must do things that allow her to be recognized without her saying so. And those of you who are here and those of you who are listening through technology, there are many things that are happening in Africa. It is easy to get tired. It is easy to be negative. It is easy to relapse into depression. It is easy to embrace do-nothingism, but ask yourself what that will do to this generation and generations yet to be found. You know, fortune favors the vigilant throughout history. The evil in Nigeria have a say, made famous by their son Chinua Cheve. When he says that when you see a frog in daylight, you know that something is after its time. <laughs> Today, many Africans are coming out. And the question that some are asking is what is after their life? There are many things that are after our lives. Poverty is running to catch us and to subdue us. And we know the pain of poverty. Wars are running after our lives. So that today, if you look at the indices of human development, life expectancy is going down. Maternal mortality is on the rise. Infant mortality is on the rise. Our young men and women are relapsing into depression. They are cannon fodder for those who are recruiting them to get into organizations whose only agenda is to destabilize the continent. And you see it across the continent. If you don't see it in Nigeria, you see it in Mozambique. If you don't see it in Mozambique, you see it in Ethiopia. And the question that we must ask is, what can we do about it? 
Impossible is a word that we are quick to embrace, but is one that belongs to the dictionary of fools and cowards. We must not say that things are impossible. I remember in 1987 when a young man seized political power in Burkina Faso, Thomas Tankara. He said, in order to change the world, you must do things that others will think are mad. This is the point in time at which we must be mad, but mad in an organized way. I am urging you continue being insane because it is only through insanity of that kind that we are going to change the continent of Africa. I look forward to the day in Ghana when with Sister Arikana we shall be present there and cut the sword so that we may lay the foundation stone for a city which will become a pilgrimage site for our men and women who are in the diaspora and for others who are living within the mother continent. It can be done and it must be done. So the time is now. The time is now for us to rise up and do the things that we must. The time is right for us who are in the mother continent to create an environment where those of you who are in the diaspora can come home. Whether you are in the United States of America, whether you are in Europe or Latin America or in Asia, you must create, we must create an environment where you can come in and support our efforts. It can't be done. Sister Arikana talked about the Jews. Ask yourselves if you read history when these Jews were dispersed. Over 2,000 years ago, then in 1948, they created a nation. There are just a few of them. But wherever you go in the world, you hear this is a Jewish establishment. I'm told that there is an unwritten code that money must circulate within amongst them several times over before it goes out. Look at us. The relationship between ourselves and money is so flirtatious that when it enters our pocket is in the business of getting out. <laughs> We must stop that. We must create an environment where when money gets into our pocket, it finds a comfortable residence which accommodates it, which allows it to germinate and to grow. Until the day that we do that, we are going to be the scoundrels of this world. And we cannot afford that luxury. You know, when statisticians do what they do best, and they tell us that there are 400 million of people of African origin in the diaspora. I ask myself what it is that they can do. And I hear it being said that if they, if only one million of them were to decide to give and give consistently, then we could move mountains. But you know, we must exercise certain ghosts which are resident in our hearts and minds. The ghosts of suspicion, the ghosts of doubt, the ghosts of low self-esteem. These ghosts are so dominant in our hearts and minds that whenever we want to move in the right direction, they tell us, please, don't move in that direction. It was never meant for you. Until we exercise those ghosts, we are not going anywhere. So you are here, there is a sense in which you are, you are in the process of exercising those ghosts by agreeing to sit here and to listen and to listen to investment and ideas that can propagate the African agenda in a positive way, you are beginning to move in the right direction. 